Welcome to the world of the Pyrrhoa Pyrrhoa. These Central and South American birds do well in captivity. They have a natural curiosity, social ability, and playfulness which makes them ideal companions. I'm Steve Garvin of the Feather Tree, here to introduce you to the quiet branch of the Conyer family, the Pyrrhoas. These four-month-old babies are already physically full-grown and are the average size of an adult Pyrrhoa Conyers. These babies are a color variety of the green cheek conure bred here at the feather tree. There are seven genera of long-tailed New World parrots, collectively known by the common name conure, of which the Puro conures are the smallest and the quietest. As you can see, with these Eritrea conures, Gende conures, their vocalization and volume does not fit in the most households. Puruas are the quieter of the conures, most having less volume than a cockatiel. There are 17 types of Puro Conyers. Let's look at a few of them. The Black Cap Conyer originally came from Peru and Brazil. They are easily identified with their black cap and a usually shaped triangle skeleton on your breast. The Rose Crowned Conyer comes from Western Venezuela. It has red ear coverets, a rose-colored forehead, and a light horn-colored beak. It lacks a scalloping on the breast found in most other Peruas. The beautiful crimson-bellied conure comes from northern Brazil. Juveniles lack the bright crimson breast of the adults. Crimson-bellied was once rare in captivity and now is well-established in breeding programs in agriculture. These are beautiful pearly conures from northern Brazil. They have a distinctive suffusion of light blue on their breast and cheeks. The blue-throated conure is the largest of the Peruas and is also from Brazil. Uh -oh, I felt the, dog go by. the unusual Hoffman's conure has red ear coverts and lacks the breast patch of most of the other Peruas. This bird is rarely found outside of Costa Rica and Panama. In the United States in 1992, there were 11 of these birds in captivity. A breeding consortium was established, and by 1998, this dedicated group of private aviculturists have bred over 148 of these wonderful birds. This mostly green bird comes from Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, and Argentina. Sometimes confused with the green cheek conure, the maroon belly can be distinguished by its green tail. The maroon tail conure, or suance conure, is from Brazil, Ecuador, and Peru. The beautiful pated conure comes from Brazil, Peru, Bolivia, and Colombia. This colorful bird is the smallest of the Peruas. This family of five chicks and two adults represents the family type well. The juveniles in the background lack the bright blue forehead and intensity of colors found in the adult birds. A subspecies of the pated conure is the rosy fronds, found in northwest Brazil. 
The blue on the forehead has been replaced by a vibrant red, which may increase with age. This flashy bird easily lives up to its name. The fiery-shouldered conure was originally found in Venezuela, Guyana, and parts of Brazil. The white ear conure, or gray breast, is also divided into subspecies. This type of white ear conure is referred to as Grispectus and are from northern Brazil. Emma's conure is another subspecies of white ear conure. It was originally found in northern Venezuela. Probably the most commonly bred perua in the United States is the green cheek conure. They have an outgoing personality, a red tail, heavy scallops on their breast, and make excellent pets and companions, and now occur in many different colors. They originally came from Argentina and Brazil. This is a wild-caught yellow-sided conure. Although we used to think that the yellow-sided conure was the separate type of conure, we now know them to be a naturally occurring color mutation of the green cheek conure found in the wild. Through selected breeding, the color of the yellow-sided conure has been intensified. Now, other spectacular color mutations of the green cheek conure now occur, such as the pineapple. The blue, or pastel blue. The fallow, or cinnamon, green cheek conure. And many other wonderful colors without names. Wild conures were imported into the United States until 1995. Now, any conure babies you might see are domestically bred. Babies can be removed from the nest to the nursery, as seen with these baby pated conures, or left with the parents for natural rearing. Perua conures will nest in a wide variety of nest boxes if lined with pine shavings and given privacy. Protective parents, a hen conure usually lays an egg every two and a half days, with six to eight being the average clutch. Let's watch this unusual colored family of green cheek conures bred by the feather tree grow up. Out of a clutch of seven, five eggs have hatched two days apart. By the first week, the babies have doubled in size and their eyes remain shut. By the next week, their eyes are open and the babies are walking around the box. They've grown down and the oldest chicks are growing pin feathers. Usually, if the babies are going to become pets, they are eventually removed from the nest for hand feeding. This ensures that the babies will be socialized to people. Already as youngsters, these five babies have learned to trust and play with their foster parents.
Often at this age, the baby's wings are clipped to prevent them from harming themselves in their first rapid flight. As there are many schools of thought regarding wing clipping, trimming can be done to various degrees, depending on the bird's future, environment, and temperament. When the babies start climbing out of the box, they are placed in a cage. Within hours, our five babies are perching and settling into their new environment. Although still intellectually babies, at 13 weeks, these rare color mutations of green cheek conyers are fully independent and ready for their new homes. Pyruas make ideal house pets with their lack of odor and dust, and their droppings do not attract flies or vermin. Conyers can be kept in a wide variety of cages, either this classy neon pet products cage, or this more basic cockatiel cage, which is ideal for conyers. These bars are too wide. Bar spacing is very important. Make sure no bars are no more than one half inch apart for most species. Some great accessories that can be added to a pyrus cage are busy beak work toys for pyrus mental, physical stimulation. Rope perches provide an excellent foot workout. Hanging toys like this surfer offer a wide variety of tactile surfaces. Large hard pieces like on this toy may be too big for some conyers, but others may enjoy it. Mineral blocks actually give your birds something to chew on as well as a mineral supplement. Swings are a traditional favorite. This great one with cloth for diversion should be periodically checked for loose strings so the birds do not hang themselves. Spray millet is joyfully devoured in moments. This plastic chain can be used for linking toys and hanging from the cage and may be easily sterilized. Hooded crocs can protect your floors and surrounding cage area from flying food. They should not be used for water for the size of birds. This fruit kebab simulates natural tree feeding by allowing you to hang fruits and vegetables from the top of the cage. This plastic ball is an all-time favorite. This hanging food holder is a nice dispenser and offers a challenge for their curious minds. Disinfectants are very important. EnviroClean is a great disinfectant and detergent for cleaning the cage and surrounding area. To maximize the stimulus of some of these toys and activities, stagger their introduction to prevent boredom. Pyrua conyers eat a wide variety of foods in a wide variety of ways. Some even enjoy yes. sharing people food. Yes. Mr. Green, what you doing? Conyers enjoy fruits such as oranges, apples, grapes, kiwis, and cantaloupe. Peeling a grape can even be as much fun as eating it. Vegetables like carrots, peas, broccoli, and squash are welcome. Cracked large nuts are nutritionally different as well as challenging. Supplements such as vitamin mineral blocks are also essential. Big pieces of food do not have to be cut into small pieces. These curious birds are happiest when natural foraging and feeding behaviors are encouraged. Seed diets are a nice staple. Pelleted foods are also a great choice to round off their diet. 
We recommend natural branches, such as ficus. These provide hours of intellectual and physical stimulation, trace minerals, beak conditioning, as well as great fun. Do not feed any type of avocado or its branches, and ask your veterinarian for a list of non-toxic plants. Playing is a favorite pastime of pyroas, and hanging upside down with a toy is a common position. Occasional squabbles do occur, but are quickly forgotten and forgiven. These light plastic balls are an all-time favorite. Because we have taken away their environmental dangers, we need to exercise their natural responses. An awareness of some of the social needs of pyroas and how easy it is to provide them with mental and physical stimuli will assure them of a happy and well-adjusted life. Even a rubber ducky can be solicited for a potential playmate. Conyers love to bathe. Running or moving water seems to excite them and triggers a bathing response. If a low, shallow croc is placed in a cage, it is common for them to bathe immediately. In cold weather or in hot, they'll even bathe in wet foliage. Conyers down and feathers look and work best when allowed to frequently bathe. Many types evolved in the wild where it rains daily. We've been telling you how curious and intelligent pyroas are. One fun aspect of their intelligence is their ability to learn tricks. Trainer Tani Robar of Seattle, Washington has a wonderful series of videos on teaching your bird tricks. Tani's green cheek, Conyer Poopsie, is a natural clown. Okay, there we go. Get it figured out? Okay, Poopsie, you show us. That's right, number one. Very good, Poopsie. Now, dogs are colorblind. They see things only in shades of gray. But um, birds have fantastic eyesight. They can see even more colors than we do. So here to show you how that works, um, Poopsie will not only place the rings on the pegs, she'll place it according to color. Okay. Poopsie, how about putting the pink one on? And the green the green and here's the yellow one very good when people call somebody else a bird brain it usually means they don't think they're very smart well poopsie takes great offense to this um, she thinks she's smarter than that and this next trick is to show uh, the intelligence of the bird after all this is something you could teach a two-year-old to do if you have enough bird seed okay poopsie show them how you do it huh Okay, let's put the round in the round, okay? Okay, and how about the square one? You want to put the square one in? And how about the triangle? Very good, okay. That was a good baby. Is it okay? Um, so I brought home these little containers, and I said, but now, uh, you've got to have to learn to read. See, they say paper on both sides and glass and cans. So she said, no problem. I said, okay. Put in the glass. Very good. And here's cans. And how about paper? Uh, that's right. Oh, 
Very good. Uh huh. Okay. But how about doing an impression of those guys that, yeah, that collect the materials? They're always knocking down all the cans, but they sure make a lot more noise than you do. Very good. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, I used to be a dog trainer. So the first tricks I thought of teaching the birds were the ones I'd trained my dogs to do. So I taught them how to shake hands and uh, how to roll over and, of course, be a dead bird. Uh, which would you rather be, a Democrat or a dead bird? Even non-professional trainers and pet owners can find that reinforcing these natural behaviors can create a very fulfilling human-animal bond. Here, Renee Fergio and her bird Pepito show what their relationship has evolved into based on play, understanding, and affection. Hi. Hi, Petey. Hi, Pepito. Poor Petey. Pepito, who was bred by the feather tree, was adopted by Rene when he was five months old. He has become a constant companion and helper in many areas of her life. Yes. Yes. Where's Pepiti? What you doing? <laughs> I just sweep every day. Huh. These clean, odorless birds fit day. well into households and lives. They do not make loud noises and most have great attitudes. We hope we have provided you with enough information about the care and needs of pyruas, so you may in turn provide a stimulating and healthy environment. We are their social directors. It is our responsibility as the caretakers of these companion animals to assure them of physical and mental well-being. We have included some resources in the final credits. Your local pet shop, bird club, and veterinarian are great sources of knowledge. This has been Steve Garvin of the Feather Tree. Hi, Pepito. Hi, Pepito. Yes. 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 <laughs> no. Yes. 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 Baby. Baby. Mommy. Baby. Yes. Baby. Yes. Papito. 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 Yes. Yes. Mommy. Mommy. So what does he say to you? He says, go poo poo. He says, pretty bird. He says, pretty boy. He says, mama. He whistles. He does anything you say.
Mm-hmm. 